With all due respect, with all due respect, this idea is just straight up bad. It's among the worst ideas I've ever heard. Top five, easy. And welcome back to Everything in Potteration, because sometimes the internet can be too much. Brought to you by AT&T. Because this entire movie is brought to you by AT&T and Warner Brothers. Hey guys, did I mention Warner Brothers? You're going to hear Warner Brothers a lot. Because we're talking about the brand new Space Jam movie. Space Come Jam. on and slam! You know what? The legacy of this movie, it's called Space Jam A New Legacy. And the legacy of this movie... Is going to be that it is just a gigantic Warner Brothers commercial. I'm Colin Sparling. How you doing, everybody? Hi, I'm I'm Robert, and be very very quiet. I'm hunting a wascally capitalism. <laughs> Welcome to the Space Jam. It's I'm Daily. It's me, and I'm I feel very welcomed to this particular Space Jam. Mm. You, you guys, you know, I'm just I'm I'm feeling it. I'm just gonna jump right into the philosophical questions because oh. like is this is this just late stage capitalism the movie yes yeah, <laughs> is that what yeah. this is one billion percent um if if you're if you're watching or listening to this episode and you haven't seen space jam yet i would normally be courteous and give you a spoiler warning but i'll be honest save your 15 dollars man just spend it on I don't know, Haichu or something. You know, so yeah, I don't for know something good. Anything else. We watch, yeah. we, this is available on HBO if you must watch it, by the way. So you don't need to go out to the theater and make a night out of it. Probably have a nice dinner to then be ruined by late stage capitalism being shoved down your throat afterwards. Yeah. So, so, so fair warning. We are going to talk full spoilers about Space Jam 2. But if you haven't seen it, please don't feel the need to have watched the movie <laughs> to no. enjoy this episode. <laughs> Yes, because let me tell you, aside from just is just fucking it's like it's like a, it's like a turkey. It's like a turkey on Thanksgiving. They're like, we're going to stuff this motherfucker with as many references and IPs as we can fit. Oh, but the difference, Colin, is I like stuffing or yeah, dressing. It's if you delicious call it in the end. <laughs> yeah. No, the stuffing in this is like hot garbo dookie not delicious so yeah it's like somebody didn't even i don't know it's like that that ant that tried to bring the stuffing to thanksgiving but like instead of following a recipe or even using a packet she just kind of won it mm. and it turned out really dry and flit and, and kind of flavorless you're eating it anyway you're eating it anyway because it's there and you just you pour enough gravy on it it'll it'll taste fine but it's still bland it's yep. so nice that this is our Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> yeah, our Thanksgiving in July. Um, frankly, there's there's no amount of gravy you can pour over Space Jam, a new legacy to make it any good. Um, it's... Uh... To, to extend the metaphor, I thought it was going to be cheesy. <laughs> uh, it, it's not. It's rancid. It's rancid cheese. It's a yeah, nasty it's, cheese it's, that no one want to eat. Okay, it's the so cranberry sauce of movies. So I listen. I will. I, I I actually will. I'll say something good about this movie. So as if, if any of you guys have been listening to any of us long enough, you'll know that I am just a poor boy from Ohio. Okay. And nobody and loves you because you're easy. Come because yeah. And <laughs> Ohio is for lovers and all that emo kid. Okay. Uh, and the thing about Ohio is we don't, we don't we don't have too many things to be like crazy proud of. You know, like it like Ohio is a, a decent place to grow up, whatever. But like beyond that, like we don't we don't have many claims of fame. We're no L.A. We're no like New York. And there's nothing like that in, in Ohio. But we take our wins when we can get them when it comes to like celebrities, sports. We have the Cleveland Browns. We don't talk about that. But we do have a small team called the Cleveland Cavaliers. And we did have LeBron James, who is born and raised in Akron, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So the Akron what? Hammer, as I learned from watching the movie. Did they say that? I don't the even remember that. The Akron <laughs> Hammer. Yeah, I these were these films were both more like biopic than I was expecting. Yes. I like learned a lot about 
the basketball player in question. Right. And and so we should say, right? So all of us, without consulting each other, did watch <laughs> Space Jam A New Legacy and then right afterwards immediately put on Space Jam starring Michael Jordan, not Michael B. Jordan, but Michael oh, Jordan, God. the no, basketball no. boy. <laughs> so yeah, we're, so we're going to be comparing the two. <laughs> uh, yeah. For, it, it, so if you decide not to watch it, they do do a fucking gag where they're just like, they found him. But it's like halftime in the big game at the end of the movie. They're like, we found him. We found his airness. Air Jordan or whatever, and it shows like a dude's silhouette, and I was like, "Wait, that is a look that looks like Michael B. Jordan." And then he walks out of the shadows, like, "Hey guys," and it's like Michael B. Jordan. It's, it's Michael B. <laughs> you know, Jordan from from Back Panther, Fruitvale Station, many other movies. Yeah, and you know, I gotta say, I love Michael B. Jordan. I think he's a fantastic actor who always puts like one hundred and twenty percent in everything he does. He put in yes. like five percent in this movie. It's very <laughs> it's clear. A cameo. I can't blame him for that. Yeah, it's just it was very clear that the paycheck was at least six figures, and he was just like, "Oh, oops, I'm not supposed to be in this movie." Isn't that funny, guys? And then he deadpans the audience for five minutes, yeah. and then tells LeBron, "Hey." Good luck. <laughs> and dips out. I'm going back to my seat. Bye. And Bugs Bunny's just like, guys, that's Michael B. Jordan, not Michael A. Jordan. Thank you. That was my Bugs Bunny impression. It was I know it was so good. It was beautiful. It was so Wonderful. good. Hey, Colin, um, can you give me a what's up? Give us your please? Daffy. Yeah. yeah. What's up, Doc? There you go. Um and I think I think Michael B. Jordan is a good time for me to at least get the biggest one of my biggest problems with this movie off of my goddamn chest, all right? Space Jam A New Legacy is set in the modern world, sort of, where video games just happen, right? Oh, and, yeah. Okay, well, oh. but that actually mm -hmm. is my second biggest problem. My first biggest problem is this is a world that is modern day, right? LeBron James recognizes Michael B. Jordan. He recognizes Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck and Sylvester Stallone. Not Don Cheadle! Sylvester <laughs> Don Stallone? Cheadle. No. <laughs> no so, Sylvester Cat. Right? He doesn't <laughs> recognize fucking Don Ch No one recognizes Don Cheadle in this goddamn movie. Right? You mean algae rhythm? Algae, he's just algae rhythm, right? And when I think back to the uh, the first movie, Space Jam, right? I'll be honest, before we watched it, I didn't remember who the bad guy was because, you know, I was a kid and I just remember like Michael Jordan stretching his arms out real big, right? Yeah. The villain is Danny DeVito in Space Jam, but it's not like in my head I was thinking that's Danny DeVito. It's just that it's voiced by Danny DeVito, but it's this cartoon frog monster thing, right? But when it's Don Cheadle, every time he was on screen, I'm like, it's fucking War Machine from the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe. Why doesn't anyone know who he is? <laughs> it was such a weird choice, especially when he was so exposition dumpy constantly. <laughs> Nothing sounded natural coming out of his mouth. It was Don Cheadle. It's just Don Being Cheadle. like, Pete. We got to This is King James. We got to We got to get him on board for my plan. How yeah. dare he ridicule my plan? So we're just going to bring in, I guess, Don Cheadle, who is an extremely capable and, and very long career, like uh, tenured. That's the word I was looking for, a tenured actor. <laughs> and we're just going to make him tell you the whole story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, he's basically in charge of telling the entire plot to the movie <laughs> if if i can be charitable i think don Cheadle had fun in this i think don Cheadle, I, the person i think he did i think, I think he, he had fun in this movie <laughs> i, I didn't he, to be fair i think a lot of people they look like they were having fun making this at least lebron james did no i don't think he was having fun <laughs> you don't does think don lebron james is having fun does no. eh, does don Cheadle have kids because sometimes you'll see actors suddenly take these weird roles and it's because i needed to be in a movie that my kid would actually see and care about i mean maybe i i can't say no this wasn't a don Cheadle biopic this was a lebron james biopic yeah 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 well so we learned the, all about his kids so to actually get into to like criticisms about the movie too i think i mean to robert's point already about the whole like this is set in the modern era and we're still like doing the whole ha gamers like am i right we're gonna make a, a faux looking video game in a movie and this kid's a programmer but it looks nothing like making a game and i know listen i know all three of us are like pretty familiar with like game dev and the games industry so i know we're <laughs> yeah. kind of yeah we're, colin i've played tic-tac-toe i'm a fucking gamer 
Yeah, gamer. exactly. So like all of us are fairly fairly familiar with all that stuff. So I know we're kind of like the outlier, but I think any pretty much anyone who like has some iota of what how tech works is going to look at that and be like that's clearly not how how video games work. And yeah. and, it's, and your it, game doesn't break of a fucking character. Like you the kid made his own original character and he's like I made my own original character and this character glitched out and it broke the whole game and I'm like okay, that's possible. But it's like if you already made a game, it's not that much more impressive if you made your own character. Because usually, I don't know, when you make a game, you make characters to go in it. Just yeah, how it works. It it would there was it was gonna be so easy to make it way more realistic. It's just like just downgrade everything. Don't get super focused in on like the visuals for it, and just be like yeah, he's in RPG Maker or like a very basic version of Blender, like doing or that. Unity. Um, yeah, like. Uh, he, I'm sure he could make something that looks pretty good, but not like the souped up, like very, like, even when they were playing the games, it didn't line up. It was just like totally cinematic, the, mm -hmm. the actual gameplay, quote unquote. Yeah. See, I don't know. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Cause <laughs> I, I mean, I guess you're all amateurs. I've actually Fuck. been to E3 <laughs> game design camp. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know the famous I, E3 game design camp. The very famous E3 game design. I've been there, and I know how <laughs> games work. And I know it's really common. I even our our listeners so unenlightened. I know everyone might think that the game devs create the game, everyone loves it, and then everyone cosplays the characters. But actually, what they did is they made someone cosplay Kratos first, and then scanned that dude with the phone camera. And then that was the in-game model for Kratos. That's that's how it works. That's my understanding, yeah. at least from watching Space Jam, A New Legacy. Yeah, I, I, cause yeah. I was watching this and I was just like somewhere so on a on a dev team. Someone's fucking screaming <laughs> at this movie. Because all you need to do. No, Colin, all you do, you get a cheap ass looking webcam. You mm -hmm. hook it onto your phone somehow. And then it does a little laser thing and it scans anything in the world. That fucking yep. thing looked like the Game Boy camera for the original Game Boy. Yeah, <laughs> just that's saying. how powerful this tech is. It's it's been around for decades. Yeah. yeah. So kids use I, it. I know it's like I, it's just really weird to me because there are so many actual brands and IPs and, and product placements happening in this movie. But the wait, one wait, place hold on. Wait, there were product placements in this movie. It, yeah, yes. Oh, I, I didn't notice. It was. It must have been very subtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like the Xbox controllers, and I. I don't know. Was there Coke bottles? I'm pro there's, there's probably was a Coke <laughs> advertisement in there. Who fucking knows? <laughs> like, I. I don't know anymore. Puff but they were puff. playing on actual Xbox it. controllers, and I think they are actually sponsoring this movie because there was like a whole thing where you can get like Space Jam edition controllers through xbox now i mean i have the space jam video game on my xbox right now i haven't played it yet why did they just there? show the space jam video game in the movie you know hmm. they couldn't have did not, that like, they're not bold enough I, gu I guess not but like obviously they know who bugs like james lebron james knows who the fuck the looney tunes are he acknowledges them by yeah. name when he sees them Mm -hmm. So clear, it, it wouldn't be a big deal to, for them to have a, a Space Jam video game exist in this universe. I mean, for like at the beginning of the movie, LeBron James is playing uh, uh, Bugs Bunny cast, uh, Castle something or other on the Game Boy at the beginning of the movie. Like they're right. playing yeah. the Looney Tunes video game. By the way, Game which, Boy Color game he's playing on the original Game Boy. Which also, by the way, video game's bad. Yeah, I yeah video games are bad. Fuck video games, am I yeah, right? Basketball I forever. When we when we started the movie, I was like, "Oh man, this this movie hates the gamers," which I get it. I hate the gamers too, but then it it actually ended up being like a pro gamer movie. Yep. At the end, I yeah, guess. Exactly. Yep. I see what you did there. Yeah, and then yeah. it showed it showed so the most weird. fictional thing in the whole movie at the end, where it showed that it looked like it rained in L.A. That's the most fictional yeah. thing about this movie. Mm. Yeah. So, so can we talk about how this Space Jam 2, it follows a lot of Space Jam 1 beat for beat in the beginning, right? Because it opens on, both of the movies open on LeBron Jordan as a child learning how to basketball. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then a, frankly, 30-hour montage of their careers, like a sizzle reel, right? 
of them yeah. with with music. And I will say it is a shame that R. Kelly is a shit bag because that does kind of ruin uh, Space Jam 1 a little bit. It's definitely a little weird uh, to hear I believe I can fly in the year 2021. But they both start out the same, right? And what I've noticed, though, is that with Michael Jordan, right, with his Space Jam, his jam in the space, it was 1996 when the movie was published, so probably filmed throughout 1995. And that was after he had gone off to have a a career in baseball, <laughs> right? Just I like the name you chose there, the, the noun you chose there. Yeah. Career. Um, not quite, be- not as beloved as his run in the Chicago Bulls, but he had a career in baseball. And the Space Jam movie was kind of like a nice return to f- like, oh man, remember, you know, MJ, maybe he's not as good at baseball, but like, remember when he was really cool at basketball, right? Yeah. And it was just really, it was friendly, but it wasn't cocky, right? Yeah. The LeBron James stuff is very like, look at how fucking huge LeBron James' schlong is. God. Oh he's my God. so good. <laughs> at basketball he's he the is, king he's the king he's james so, every uh, time he dunks it's 20 points man yeah not to mention like at the beginning we're gonna have pretty much the opening scene on his fancy ass property residence in la on his look fancy at his beautiful custom, house and his beautiful family and his custom blue full-sized basketball court with automatic ball dispenser yeah <laughs> and just the entire movie all of the characters are just like wow lebron james is so fucking good at basketball guys he's huge on social media did you know that he's like he's like the social media king the king did you know (laughs) and like you know i get it right i'm not a big like real life basketball person or video game basketball person either but i get it that you know michael jordan was like the shit right back in the day and lebron james is the modern day the shit right yeah so i understand they're both like legends in the sport and i'm not going to knock them for that but it is wildly interesting to me how space jam one is a lot more respectful and modest about the way it's portraying how good mj was in the sport compared to today's space jam a new legacy which is just so arrogant and so So, it was weird it was like weirdly both self-congratulatory in the sense that like Yay, LeBron James, you're really good at basketball. But also, like, wow, Warner Brothers, what? Like, y'all made Space Jam. Y'all, everyone loves Space Jam. What a good idea you had in making Space Jam again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, backpats, backpats. It it was really. I'm glad that all three of us watched like both movies back to back, which is pretty funny that we still yeah. to me that we can. I needed I needed to see. Same. I needed to see. <laughs> yeah, and I you know so for reference in the new movie we don't see the Looney Tunes until almost thirty minutes into the movie. Mm. We don't see any of the Looney Tunes. We get a I have meeting twenty seven there- minutes twenty seven yeah. minutes in before Ooh. we see Bugs Bunny. Yeah, in comparison to the original, where it's like, what, eight minutes in? So at eight minutes and 40 seconds, that's when you see Danny DeVito looking at a TV screen of, like, Bugs Bunny. And then it's, like, sub-15 minutes before, like, Bugs Bunny himself actually shows up in the movie. Mm. Yeah, and so, like... That's the biggest difference, but like, well, before that, we get like the scene, you know, because they're they're taking their time, like setting up their family relationship. Okay, that's fine because it has to do with the kid. They got to set that up. They got to take more time. And then we go to the scene where we got like this business meeting because you know LeBron James like, hey, I'm gonna go to Warner Brothers TM and uh, do a meeting about a thing about like a movie or something. You want to go, kiddo? Let's let's go. Um, yeah, I love that this is a Warner Brothers movie starring LeBron James about. Warner Brothers trying to get LeBron James to star in their movie. Whoa. Yeah. And that's going to mess with me now. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, it, it's super meta. And it's like and so we're sitting here in a boardroom with Sarah Silverman and Steven Yeun for some reason. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Who we're not are, supposed to also recognize as no. prolific well, actors. Yeah, they're one of the few actors in the movie where they're actually like a character instead of playing him or herself. Yeah, which is hilarious given that Sarah Silverman's been around forever and Steven Yeun's just was nominated for an Oscar. Maybe I can't remember if he won an Oscar for Minari or not. But anyway, point being, 
So they have like this whole meeting. It's it's really awkward. And then they do like the scissor reel of animated LeBron James and all these different IPs, including Harry Potter and like the Matrix. And I can't remember the other one. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. By the way, we see Game of Thrones like four different times. Yeah, it it I understand pushing Game of Thrones. It struck me as very strange how much they push the Matrix. Yeah, okay, probably because the fourth can- movie's in development. Can, yeah, that is that, is and that then of why? course HBO Probably. wants game wants people to remember Game of Thrones positively because there's going to be some spinoffs, spin-offs. right? Spinoffs. So yes. I want to go around the table. What is the weirdest cameo to you? The weirdest cameo in the whole movie where you're like, really? They put that in? Off my to- off the top of my head, Rick and Morty. <gasps> okay, yeah, Rick and Morty yeah. is definitely a fun, a weird one, right? Because I told like that's yeah. very fringe. That's like they they're own yeah. they're under a company that's like vaguely owned by Warner Brothers that you wouldn't really think about because it's you like just Cartoon don't, Network, I guess, Adult think of it Swim. as like, that's Warner Brothers. Yeah, because yeah, it's it, Adult it, Swim's media company or whatever. Yeah, like you don't see it as that. But in terms of like star power, I think that the, there were execs who probably pushed really hard to try and get Rick and Morty in there, right? Mm. I would really like to hear what Justin Rowland thought of like <laughs> getting pitched to be in the <laughs> Space Jam movie. Taz is weird. Mm. The Tasmanian Devil's weird. Um, I did find, I did see the Clockwork Orange guys. Yes, I, I did see that. Uh, that was a weird one. For I think sure. we discussed that pretty early on. Um, but I, I looked out and it, they didn't take that out. So yeah, the Droogs are in a child friendly movie, right? So, so the weirdest one for me, and it's not, it's, it's weirder because of the frequency Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz showed up yes. so much in this movie, like the little flying monkeys, the fucking scarecrow and the tin man. It just it was constant. Like every time there was a crowd shot, I could find a Wizard of Oz reference. I saw I saw Alice. Yeah. And, and in my Wonderland. Head, yeah, <laughs> that right, Alice. <laughs> right. But in my head, I'm thinking like, what is the Venn diagram cross section between 12 year olds? who find this movie funny and 12 year olds who know an 80 year old movie. It's their parents that are taking them to see him. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely for the parents, but I just, yeah. I don't see like the, like what are they going to get out also, of seeing that? You know, it's in the public domain. Is it? Is it? It is. It is. Oh, it's it is, old it enough. Is. in the public domain. It's old no enough shit. and it was, it escaped uh, before Disney was like, guess what? <laughs> We're going to own things for longer so that it never comes into the public. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, like, the, I, the Frankel, Frank, Ruby Frank, I don't remember. Um, those novels are in the public domain. So mm-hmm. the characters and the setting and everything. I mean, public yeah, domain. Like, like Disney, learned. Disney twisted the copyright law for Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse is responsible for changing the law. I hope you know that. You, you know, I, that's funny because I was just I was thinking about that in my head and I was like, wait, so technically Mickey Mouse should be public domain for like for should. a while now. Should. 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 But, and that, that, but then I also thought I was like, they probably found a way around it because it's fucking Disney and they probably have a lobbying arm in our local government. Fucking politics. Hey, Colin, anyway. you know what? I hate the mouse as much as you do, but this is a this is a Warner Brothers hate only podcast. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, Member Berries, the movie, like the South Park episode. Member Berries. You Mamba? Member? Mamba? Member? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so <laughs> we get that crazy fucking sizzle reel, and then, I don't know, I think the the most telling thing to me with, like, watching them back to back is just, like, I feel like the Looney Tunes in general in the first movie were much more of a focal point, filling them out as characters a little bit, or at yeah. least giving each one their moment. By the way, in the original Space Jam, we get some Looney Tunes in there that are just non-existent in the new one, um, which for various reasons uh, for some of them. But like and then the new one is like they tried so hard to play the the pl- Ready Player One card of having all these cameos from all these big IP, um, which, by the way, Iron Giant. They're just they just keep shoving Iron Giant. <laughs> it's the same throat. model. Here. Someone mapped it. From what? the Ready Player One trailer to no way. Space Jam 2. It's the same model. Is Ready it. Player One the same? Is that Warner Brothers also? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, that's so weird. 
it, it's so it's so funny because that they, they know just how big of a deal Iron Giant really is, even though there's nothing that's been done with the IP since the original movie. They're no, just kinda good, like, don't. Don't touch don't it. Yeah, them, that don't movie does not it. need to be fucking touched. Leave Iron Giant alone. Um, we do not need that movie remade, remat like or anything. Just no just sequel. The, don't no worry, s- they're gonna ruin it without making a sequel by doing all of this shit. That's that's how they're gonna do it. Right. Yeah. So uh, my, my point is though, is just like all that bloat with all the uh the, the references and all these other IP being shoved into the the new movie just really cuts in to what would otherwise probably be used for filling out the Looney Tunes as characters. You know, I think I, Lola was like the only one to get a decent amount of characterization with her introduction with the Wonder Woman, of course. Hell the yeah. Woman, yeah. I love that. Wonder Woman. And, I, and also the scene where we get the Justice League. Yeah, it is weird, right, that they didn't get Gal Gadot to do Wonder Woman in this movie, but they played the Wonder Woman theme song from the Gal Gadot Wonder Woman <laughs> Which, I'm sorry, I'm not a big fan of that theme song. It's really like, it's anxiety. It, it just sounds like anxiety, you know? <laughs> it um, makes, it's just... <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't play the uh, the fucking... Uh, what, what was the, the movie we kept making... Or the music that we kept making fun of in our Justice League? Spoiler cast. The oh, fucking uh, ancient lamentation yes, music ancient, intensifies. Yes. yes, they should have played. I would have. That would have gotten the laugh out oh, of me. Shit. They should have played that. S- spoilers, because we don't fucking care. But uh, when like Bugs is dying, ancient <laughs> lamentation <laughs> music. Ancient lamentation. <laughs> 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 So sell, I, folks. So, Colin, you do have a really good point there in that I think the references overtake the second movie so much that it goes beyond just taking away from the characterization of the Looney Tunes, but it, yeah. it, it takes away from the characterization of this thing we call a movie, a movie. I like, agree. it doesn't yeah. feel like a movie. It feels like a two hour commercial with some basketball. Yeah. Whereas the first movie, Space Jam, legit feels like a movie. Everything about it feels oddly organic. Like, Compare and contrast, right? In Space Jam A New Legacy, the reason they play basketball is because Algae Rhythm's like, we're gonna play basketball. That's it, right? Whereas yeah. in Space Jam 1, the reason they play basketball is because the aliens who invade the Looney Tunes land are tiny little pipsqueaks, and Bugs Bunny and his friends are like, what's a sport we could beat the shit out of them in? And they think <laughs> about it for a little it bit. So much. Yeah, they're like, well, they're really short, so they probably really suck at basketball, so let's play basketball. And it feels way more organically done Man. than Don Chi, excuse me, Algie Rhythm saying, we're going to play basketball, king of basketball. Uh, I was about to say Michael Jordan, LeBron James. <laughs> it's so hard to explain the Space Jam, A New Legacy, like its plot. It's like for some reason they're sucked into the computer because you can do that now you get digitized oh. and uh he's mad now because uh he insulted Le- Le- lebron james insulted algae rhythms idea which that's, that's what yeah that's it that's and- exactly the reason why this whole movie because he said the algorithm a sucks. server felt insulted by lebron james and I I need to bring up. I don't know if you two are are familiar with this, but how like cellar door is a very nice like it just it rolls out of the mouth beautifully like a velvet mm. cupcake, right? Cellar door. The server verse is the opposite of that. Server okay. verse tumbles out of your mouth like a zero out of ten gymnast landing, like it broke its leg on the way out of Reverse. your tongue. The okay. server verse. Space Jam makes sense because. It's aliens from space. Space Jam 2, A New Legacy does not... Make, there's no space. It's the server-verse. Ah, right. Server-verse jam. Well, For, wait, serv- they have to go through space to get, get to the Looney Tunes world, though. That's right. That's another thing. Okay, space so why- is only a construct inside the server-verse. Hold on. So why is Looney Tunes hell in the first movie because they have to dig deep underground to get to Looney Tunes. I accept that without I like that they don't explain it they're just like yeah the Looney Tunes are in the earth duh they are hell in the first movie but in the second movie (laughs) there are another planet in digital land in digital land which is distinct from uh, Moron Mountain right Mm -hmm. which was an actual place in actual outer space right yeah, it, I think uh, 
well, first of all, yeah, the server first thing is ridiculous. It's very Kingdom Hearts like. Like each world is an IP, guys. It's like the Disney worlds from Kingdom Hearts, guys. Yeah. Um, oh, this guys, is just Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, it's just for Kingdom, Warner Brothers. It's just Kingdom Hearts for Warner Brothers. They're kind of like just they're like, hey, Tetsuya, no more. We're gonna lift your idea. Um, I think what bothers me too, especially comparing the two, is just like. <sighs> The, the original Space Jam, I think, after watching it, is a little bit of lightning in the bottle, too, because I think just the way movies were made and the type of comedy that they were doing in the 90s, too, with the, like a little bit more leaning slapstick lends itself a little bit better to the humor of the Looney Tunes. For sure. Um, because they extend Looney Tunes' humor into the real world very much so in the original Space Jam, like the scene with Wayne Knight, and he's fucking digging in the golf course. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, he's like i'm fixing a spliff or or whatever he said a divot a divot that's what i said a spliff (laughs) it's a spliff yeah it's a spliff yeah or a a divot yeah i'm fixing a divot he's like oh okay he's like that's it he's fixing a divot (laughs) yeah (laughs) and you know it's (laughs) i i think back to you around that scene because that's the scene right where bugs and daffy are sneaking back into the looney tunes world right so right before that is where they're sneaking through michael jordan's house to get michael jordan's shorts and shoes (gasps) And so charming. It's such a charming scene. And it's also one of my favorite. It's not my absolute favorite scene, but it's one of my favorites from that first movie because, right, it's it's such a polar opposite of the sequel, because the sequel, as we've made pretty clear, is capitalism AF. It's capitalism roid raging and forcing you to remember Harry Potter and Game of Thrones and a movie about cartoons playing basketball, right? Whereas in that first movie, while they're sneaking through Michael Jordan's house, Bugs Bunny turns to Daffy and is like, hey, so you know how we're on a bunch of those lunch boxes and stuff? Are you seeing any money from that? And Daffy's like, no, we're not. We need to get better agents. And for one, whoever wrote those lines, fucking genius, such a smart joke, right? (laughs) <laughs> but two, that's like so Never blatant. Never seen a scent of that. <laughs> yeah, it's so blatantly like anti-capitalist that I love it. And there's a scene too where like Daffy has like the Warner Bros logo on his ass and he kisses his own ass, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's just so anti-capitalist. And then this oh, new yeah. one, 25 years later, is just like it's sucking the capitalism dick. Yeah, and it's it's so unironic that it's the way it does it too, because it's just like a lot of the stuff that they did in the original Space Jam, a lot of corporations just can't laugh at themselves like that anymore Mm -hmm. you know like they just wouldn't yeah it shows itself in the fact that i think in the in the new movie the looney tunes rarely break the fourth wall it's it there's like a couple exceptions whereas in the original it was it's like all the time because it's that snide comment to the camera and like it, it was just it showed itself like they can't. They're too serious. They're too <laughs> into themselves. Mm-hmm. And the Looney Tunes are about like being loony and like self-referential. And yes. uh, Bugs is supposed to be like a trickster character. And but in the new movie, he's just like, I really like being a Looney Tune. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the that actually I, I now that I remember I didn't get to finish my thought from earlier was that that's the thing is like there's so much Looney Tune ness happening in the original but then like in the second movie you basically get like bugs bunny's introduction when lebron james gets into the the tune world uh and they have that whole like montage where they're like they're pulling out all the gags from like the original looney tune series and like doing all that yeah and it was just like this feels extremely rushed we're gonna shove as much shit as we can because we're probably not gonna do much later and they don't they don't really do much looney tune shit until like the actual basketball game and it's very short lived when they do do it. Like, and they're, they're not even really funny. Mm-hmm. They're not. They're just like, oh, look at Granny. She's doing karate on her walker. Guys, isn't that funny? And yeah, okay. But then, yeah. like, the original Space Jam has Daffy Duck walking up to Bill Murray and just like, so, uh, if you don't mind me asking, Mr. Murray, how did you get here? And he's like, oh, you know, the producers dropped me off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and- I do want to say, too. <laughs> For one, one Bill Murray plays Bill Murray in the first movie, right? Which is yeah, great. he does. And he's so a good. human Looney Tune. Two, 
favorite fucking scene from the first movie is Danny DeVito by way of monster saying who brought Dan Aykroyd here (laughs) when Bill Murray shows up it is easily the best line in cinema hands down (laughs) I forgot oh so good so good (laughs) and it's like it's a it's a slow burn joke in the uh, fact that even if you would watch Space Jam in your childhood, it's a rewatch when you're older that that <laughs> joke really hits. Oh, yeah, because yeah. that flew over my head as a kid. And now watching it as an adult, I'm like, that's a fucking funny joke. That is that's such good. a good line. God, he was so good. I loved um, like the the simple, like casual jokes, like when they were on the, the putting green and he was like, you, you think I could play basketball? And he gives them um, that whole spiel. And then he goes up to, they're playing golf with Larry Bird. And it's like, hey, do you think I could play basketball? And gives him the whole spiel in the background. Yeah. Oh, so and, good. And Bill Murray says, it's because I'm white, isn't it? <laughs> <Some> yes. <point laughs> <there. Yeah>. Good. <laughs> It's because Which this I'm white, new isn't movie it? wouldn't dare. Oh, yeah, because that's God. so uh, advertiser unfriendly. Wait, to be fair, there was one zinger in the second one where LeBron James, when he's talking to Don Cheadle for the first time, he's like, "Wait, the computer's black." Oh yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that um, was pretty good. But speaking of adver- adver- ter- advertisorial worries, right with the second movie. I, this is something I thought of at 2 a.m. while trying to sleep, because that's when we all have our best <laughs> ideas, right? Um, uh-huh. So in the first movie, I'd like to remind everyone, right, that when when Michael Jordan meets Bugs Bunny, it's the same idea of like Michael Jordan recognizes, oh, hey, you're Bugs Bunny, right? And then just mm. like LeBron James, I'm like, oh, my God, you're Bugs Bunny after he makes that like shitty Kevin Hart joke. When Michael <sighs> Jordan sees Bugs Bunny, he's like, you can't be real. Bugs Bunny says, oh, yeah, if I weren't real, could I do this? And it's like a four second lip to lip kiss, right? On yep. Michael Jordan. So what I'm saying is at some point in the past 25 years, conservative America turned against homoerotic bestiality in cinema. <laughs> at some point. America was not okay with Bugs Bunny kissing a black man on screen. <laughs> and right. That's where we are today. We're done. Cause, uh, cause Bugs I'm Bunny fucking ending the podcast here, Robert. <laughs> Bugs Bunny did not kiss LeBron James on the lips. Maybe him and LeBron, their Michael Jordan are still dating. Who knows? I, maybe. I don't know. Well, it's established in both movies that the main character in question is a family man. He He's is loyal to his family. Man, I wish, I wish uh, fucking Fast and the Furious, right? That's universal. <laughs> but, family. Man, <laughs> God damn. That, I mean, that, listen, I'm just saying that there was a joke in the movie, the Mike Myers film slash, uh, God, why can't I think of the other guy's name? Austin uh, Powers? No. Wayne's World. In, the, in that movie, there is a passing comment where Garth is like, you know, when you watch Looney Tunes and Bugs Bunny dressed up as a girl did you think she was hot <laughs> i feel like that was the furry awakening like 40 years ago and then 20 years ago the furry awakening was awakening was lola bunny in the in the looney tunes in the original looney tunes they dressed up in drag quite a bit yeah especially bugs because he's a trickster yeah it, yep, yep oh my which he wasn't in the new movie he was like uncomfortably earnest yeah yeah well let me let me tell you something else too is like so we didn't really get much of a storyline on the outside world while the events of space bm and new new uh new legacy were going was going on like it was kind of just like yeah we're looking for like my family like the family's looking for lebron they're like where the hell's lebron matt malik we got to find lebron but in the other movie they're like the whole fucking player. nba is shutting down because a bunch of the key players had yes. their talents oh my god and I that's love what made it. the monsters happen and so here's charles barkley and larry bird and others like they get like shit at basketball charles barkley gets thrashed by a bunch of kids and they're like you're not charles barkley get the f- get out of here go yeah, he's just a wannabe yeah Dude, and and I, I love so how they're, they're going, like getting therapy and going to the hospital yeah. and getting treated 
And the NBA shuts down. They're like, no more NBA games until this this gets figured out. Like, that was the best. I loved that little story. Like, I loved how, like, they didn't need to do that, right? They could have just had Mm. the Monstars steal their, their mojo, and then we wouldn't need to see them again. Right. That, they could have totally gone that route. But I said they were like, so what would happen if the NBA All-Stars really did lose their mojo? What would actually for real fucking happen if they suddenly lost all of their talent? It, it raised the stakes. It was like, oh, man, they're all really depressed and yeah. messed up. We got to get their talent back. God, it was so good. And, and just the Space Jam 2 doesn't do any of that shit. Garbage. No. Yeah. No. no. I mean, because it Space makes Jam... up the the, the, the players on the other team aren't even real technically. Yeah, they're digitized. Yeah, digitized. and they did like a weird thing in Space Jam: A New Legacy where they like tried to use real NBA and well and WNBA players as like the base for the villain characters, right? And well, they just well, turned them into like the monsters. They did that for Space Jam One too. The, those monsters are based on like vaguely loosely. But they're based on the the LA Lakers. Oh, mm-hmm. it's just hard that. to notice, right? Like mm. it, it, it clued me in with Larry Bird because the really tall blue one, like, kind of looks like Larry Bird. It sounds like a stoner. <laughs> yeah, but the, I mean, but that's how we get the whole like the kids making a game and Don Cheadle's like. Don, Don, I had a good joke for this earlier. Ellie, mm-hmm. Ellie, <laughs> Algie rhythm, Don Chi rhythm. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, uh, Don Chi rhythm. There you go. Yeah, wow. Don, Don Chi rhythm. Yeah. Uh, so I also I, want to bring up how, you know, so in the second movie, right, all of the movie references that they make are just WB saying, hey, we own this property. So we're just going to actually for real put that movie and its ideas in Space Jam, right? Like it wasn't yeah. just lebron james cosplaying as a wizard from um from harry potter but it was like let's put him for real in harry potter let's put him for he's in hufflepuff yeah they even bring in footage from mike myers's austin powers and and doctor it a bit to fit in this movie right i forgot about that part (laughs) right and then when when we were watching space jam one it went over my head as a kid right because you know i was a i was a fucking child but you know, there are references to other movies, very popular adult movies um, in Space Jam 1. The difference mm. is when there was the Pulp Fiction reference, they didn't I bring thought, in yeah. Samuel L. Jackson to point a gun at someone out of nowhere. It was Elmer Fudd, right? And one other character yeah. dressed up and they were playing the, you know, the miserable like... I think it was Yosemite Sam. Yeah, Yosemite, right? And it's like, so it's the Looney Tunes referencing these other movies or like when Bugs Bunny was giving that motivational speech, he was doing a patent thing, right? Which was like amazing. But, but in this modern day movie, it's like, you remember the real Harry Potter? Remember the real game of Thrones, the real matrix. There is one time I will say that they did it right. Mm. And, or it, it tickled my funny bone. Anyway, it was uh, play it again, Sam. And it's Yosemite Sam. Because that just felt like a shit post to me. Oh, like yeah. this really elegant black and white movie. Play it again, Sam. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the Yosemite Sam. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. I, I do think, too, looking back on it, the Matrix scene where it's Granny, you know, hacking the Matrix or whatever. That yeah. Was, that was pretty good. But then I think back to the, the Wonder Woman thing where it's like, this is weird, right? Or, it feels the, strange. Yeah, and the Justice League one, too, that was like, this isn't good this is kind of actually horrible <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, the i will say the um i i don't know what do you guys think of the the way that they introduce lola bunny because i the, it almost feels like they're trying to overcorrect for like the sexualization that happened in the first one a little bit you know because they're like she's like the only Looney Tune character that they really give like the spotlight to for a mm. good bit of screen time mm. there so it feels like, you know, we're going to show her as, a, as like an empowered woman character, which is fine. I'm just saying that it in, in lieu of the first movie, it feels like an overcorrection for that because there was a huge controversy around it. Uh, I don't know. I don't I don't have any strong feelings about it because I think for both movies, I think Lola Bunny was portrayed as like, you know, the strong, powerful, selfless woman, independent woman. But mm. the old 90s one also had that extra tinge of like, 
and she's hot. Right. Yeah. Right, like, right, right. Her ears would be over her face and she'd like blow them out of her eyes all the time. Mm hmm. Yeah, and there's there's literally a scene. And titties. There's titties. literally a scene where she's Obviously. like wearing a crop top. She's like running across the gym and like pulls up her like arm strap. Yeah, it's like hanging off of her crop top, and it's like, are, are, is this implied furry nudity that's happening in Space Jam it's right a now? Great sexual yes. awakening for many a person. Yeah, it's like, it's like bunny. Dude, I didn't know it was that explicit. I didn't remember it being that explicit. Yeah. Um, yeah, the second time around, I, I still like Lola, Lola Bunny in it too, voiced by Zendaya, by the way, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, she's a great character. Don't get me wrong; like, she's probably yeah. one of the better Looney Tunes characters in the second movie. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, it, I don't know. I was just, I just wanted to present that to see you guys how, how you guys felt about it. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think overall she's probably one of the better Looney Tunes that was portrayed. Um, I do feel like. So growing up, one of my faves was Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote, just because they're just the stupidest fucking characters, right? They're oh, so, same. so good at what they do. In the first movie, I think that they were characterized very well. I feel like they were fairly represented, right? Like that they, like all their gags shone through and a lot of the recurring gags even showed up in other characters' gags, right? In the first movie. Mm. In the second movie, they're hella gimped. They're hella lame, right? In in the second movie, like they barely do anything. And it's it's weird cuz like Wile E. Coyote is in my favorite scene from the second movie, but it's not because he's like a Wile E. Coyote character, but just like cuz he's in Mad Max. He's introduced as Mad that's Max. That's fucking right. Yeah, I forgot that, that those Mad Max scene was good. Witness okay. me. Wait, he yeah, holds up the sign. sign that says witness me. And I'm like, that was okay, good. this is probably the good. best scene. This is the best thing of the movie easily. <laughs> but it wasn't like, because he was Wile E. Coyote. It was just like, oh, that's kind of a funny take on Mad Max, I guess. Yeah, man, that's a that's a one of those like first draft ideas. And it's like, wouldn't it be funny if, you know, because it's in the desert, too. And they were like in Mad Max. Wouldn't it be funny? Mm -hmm. And it's like, OK, sure. Yeah, that's funny. But no, they took it all the way to the end. They, they were like, it's in the movie. We're going to film. Uh, we're going to take some uh, extra scenes from the original cut of Mad Max. Uh, we're going to use that and put a roadrunner running through it mm -hmm. dum, 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 or however if he makes his noise I can <laughs> meep, meep. <laughs> that was meep, meep. yeah i i mean i don't know i mean i think uh i think overall with with the the new space jam movie i just don't think i mean i don't know i think the original space jam was too much of a, a lightning in a bottle time in a place thing like they were just able to capture it so well like the the, the charm of the first move like I couldn't believe within the first few minutes how charmed I was by the original compared to the f the second one. Like yeah. mm -hmm. the the first the first one just feels cozy, and yeah. I, and I know like well, I, that's probably I'm someone nostalgia, who has, right? It is. It's a, it's nostalgia. Like I'll admit it, but I think there's just better writing going on in the first one compared to the second one. Like. Yeah regardless of the ips regardless of how they use the looney tunes or who's who's like starring in the movie i mean of course i love bill murray um but do like, you mean dan Aykroyd? yeah dan Aykroyd, him too yeah if dan, dan Aykroyd was in the movie we'd probably get an ad for crystal skull vodka oh my gosh you know what would have been so good if dan Aykroyd was in space jam 2 and someone said why the fuck is bill murray here bill murray here ah! <laughs> they could have they could have. Uh, I mean, that you joke see, Crystal Skull fly. Vodka is filtered using real diamonds. Yeah, no, Dan Aykroyd's kind of a weird nut job now. It's kind yeah, of weird. He's kind of, he's kind of crazy. Space Jam, who be what is probably what he would have said. If someone would have yeah. asked him about it. Yeah, he's a Grinch. That's he's us, the Grinch. A jam. <laughs> welcome to the Space Jam. I didn't feel very welcomed to uh, the, the second Space Jam. I felt I was being sold to constantly mm -hmm. more like space it, more it, like space peanut butter am i right i don't get it i don't get it either oh the star there were star trek references there were yeah did a did a bugs bunny did a shatner which i think is within his character he would do yeah, he would um do shatner. he would do impressions of famous people and to be fair the og space jam also had a star trek reference Right, so Star ah, Trek is yes. timeless because of that scene at the end when Michael Jordan's like, "Here, touch this CGI ball to regain your mojo." 
um one of the la lakers is like that looks like some star trek shit so, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i hated um the the nerd lux i think is what they're called the nerd nerd something the monsters before they're big beefy monsters oh the little ch- uh, little chibi boys the little little alien guys i was really annoyed with them at first i didn't think that their voices were well voice acted as- especially alongside you know classics of the looney tunes mm. but when they did finally transform it made their voices fit their bodies better so i wasn't as peeved off with the characters but and in the end, I was charmed by them. Unlike al- algae rhythm, bad. Also, yeah. he d- in the end, does he still have like power though? Like, does Wonder Brothers still have this super powerful server that was able to digitize people and imprison them in a basketball game? No, because he lost the basketball game, and that you know that saves yeah. that saves the world. Yeah, of but course. Does, you know, they couldn't just replicate him or anything like that, or just. You know, because algorithm. So, so like the the all those servers were just like deleted forever, right? And Warner Brothers doesn't have access to that kind of unlimited, weird, unfettered power anymore, yeah. right? Yeah, no, Don Cheadle is free to be a war machine now. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. of course. Yeah, that was my Who thing. Was Pete? Just, what's that? What? what? The little guy. The, the, the little CGI guy. Oh, Pete. Oh, yeah. Who was Pete? I don't know. He should have been a I Looney Tunes like, character. He should, he should have been a Looney Tunes character. Why the f- it yeah, made why it seem like he? I needed to know. Like it was like, yeah, that's Pete. And it's like, do I? Did you already introduce Pete? Mm-hmm. I don't remember being introduced to Pete. No. Nope. Like I went back and there's no intro. It's just Pete. Uh, we're we're going to do this now, Pete. Yeah, Pete is the most focus grouped character. I've ever seen in cinema. <laughs> Just like, how could we make him as cute as fuck? Yeah, uh, yeah. Pete. I mean, Pete was garbage. They they should have used. I don't know. Who, who would have been Marv- even a good Pete? Should have been Algae Rhythm or Marvin the Martian. Yeah, Marvin the Martian could have been, been a sidekick. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or um, I don't know. Wait, is Tom? The, is Tom and Jerry? Is that Warner Brothers? Yes, so it's on Cartoon yes. Network, and I feel like it might be under the Hanna Barbera umbrella, but I'm not sure. Oh, I think, it is Hanna Barbera because yeah, yeah. we got to see Scoob. No, wait, Scoob, no, 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 no. Uh, Scoob, fucking uh, Tom and Jerry's MGM, which is owned by Amazon yes. oh, now. You're right, the lion, the lion yeah. that roars. That's right. So Jeff Bezos owns Tom and Jerry's now. That right. Bastard. That's I was thinking why we, it would be it would be cool to have Tomcat as a sidekick, but maybe that's not. why we didn't have James Bond in this movie. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because you bet if they own that, then that would have been in there. You we, there would have been a dun 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 dun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, the James Bond. <laughs> bing, 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 Thank you. Bing, yes. Bing, okay. Daily, good. I don't know what you were going for. <laughs> I got you. The I, beginning I, listen, part. I took me a second, but I got it. I saved you. You got it. Yes. I'm not yeah. crazy, Robert. Uh, I, I think crazy. you are, but for different reasons. I don't. I, but yeah, you think I, I'm loony? Mm-hmm. Man, and that's mentioned too. Before we even get to like the meat and potatoes of like the second Space Jam movie, there were so many like posters in the background advertising newer movies too. Like I saw Justice League. I saw like Joker. I saw Joker. Scoob. Fucking wait, and actual Joker. Actual there, Joaquin there was, Phoenix's like, three Joker. Different. There was three yeah. different Jokers. Why? There was three. I saw Jack Nicholson's the original from the '60s series. Uh, Adam West Batman too. But a side note, and also Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. You know, domestic terrorist, the Joker. Yeah. <laughs> In this child-friendly basketball space game. Well, well if we want to talk about that, Pennywise the Clown was there too. Yeah, fucking Pennywise. God damn. <laughs> so an yeah. elder god that eats children. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I, I came across this in my notes, and I need to say it now before I forget about it, but just consumerism, AF, remember when LeBron James lands in the Looney Tunes world, the crater he makes is in the it's shape a, of the Nike logo, right. the swoosh. That's it's the right. Nike swoosh. That's right. Yes. Oh, and and I this is like- so hard. This is less than 20 minutes after LeBron James dabs. He dabs. The dab. 
It happened, guys. The dab happened. But but wait, but you know we're we're making fun of this in as a as a alter to consumerism. But and we will continue to yeah. Isn't the real story about the bond between father and son? No, it's really not. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, because they, they stretch out this one small conflict for the entire movie, and at the end, he's like, they're like, yeah, yeah, basketball camp, blah, blah. Actually, we're at the game design camp, son. Go have Excuse fun. Excuse you. E3 game design. You cannot forget the E3 in this. Oh, yeah, e- E3. Who who owns E3? Is it Reed Pop? Is it Reed Pop that does E3? No, it's the ESA. Oh, wait. Yeah, you're right. So, wait, yeah, they actually had to get the ESA involved. They got E3 but they couldn't actually show a video game being made. That, that, that was the point I was trying to make no. earlier was like, they got all these product placements, they got all these IPs, but they couldn't get like Unreal or like Unity or I don't know, make RPG something that looks maker. like a, and, and, and some sort of engine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I I feel like it was one of those decisions that was made not because like the script wrote it that way, but uh, what did you say earlier, Robert? Focus grouped. It was like yes. the kids aren't going to be able to understand uh, what he's doing or even adults aren't going to understand what he's doing. So we yeah. need to dumb it down as much as possible and make it wrong. Yeah, but they go as far as to have a name like E3 put in there just like as an easter egg for the gamers like yeah and make it the e3. dabbing at the gamers you know and also just i am surprised that fortnite just didn't in this movie there, there wasn't a fortnite was there any fortnite dances no there the, wasn't was there? the dab kind of is the Wait. closest thing there was there was something about the 3d animation that looked very fortnite at one point yeah but oh, i yeah. don't think it was like a direct dab it was just like this is what video games look like wait yeah actually actually actually, space jam sponsored fortnite because they put lebron james in him and oh is that what i'm thinking of was it just straight up in fortnite is in fortnite he is a playable character in fortnite now i i fucking original space jam director slams a new legacy sequel lebron james ain't michael joe oh this that's funny. I started reading that before even comprehending it. Ooh. <laughs> Wait, the original Space Jam director is slamming the new movie? Yes. I will because I Google LeBron James Space Jam, meaning to Google LeBron James Fortnite. I am three drinks in. <laughs> we are all a little bit in eighth grade. Fun fact. But yeah, apparently the original director is like, hey, fuck LeBron James. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I mean, not actually. Not actually. Oh, that. that's good. But the truth. The qu- <laughs> quote. The truth is that LeBron ain't Michael. Is that it? That's it. Oh, okay. That's I mean, the truth. ESPN commentators have been saying that for ten years now. Yeah, it's not a hot take. No, no. <laughs> even though actually, I think LeBron James does have a better record than Michael Jordan does, and he has for a few years now. But they ain't the same person. Okay, yeah. So you, so you. Maybe it's maybe it's just the acting that he's referring to because I did feel that LeBron James was a poorer actor. Oh yeah, he was than, not very good. Oh. Uh, Michael Jordan, I, like Michael Jordan, like <clears throat> wasn't trying, which I think worked for his character. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, whereas like it, it's embarrassing to see LeBron James earnestly try to like nail some like, whoa, what's happening lines. At least LeBron called it out. Right. He did say, I don't know about athletes being actors. That never turns out well. Yeah, they, that was self-aware for like a minute there. Yeah. Either mm-hmm. self-aware or horribly unaware. It's like this is a straight up bad idea, but we're doing it anyway. Mm-hmm. So yes, can confirm LeBron James was in Fort Knife. He's he was in the Fork Knife as a skin. And I also want to ask you, Colin, as our born and raised in Ohio, and I know you're really big into basketball. LeBron James is your huge. I, I've seen pictures of your uh your childhood bedroom, just every wall is plastered with LeBron James merch. Yep. How how does this make you feel as an Ohioan? So the closest we got was like the opening sizzle reel, right? Was that like 
uh, you know, he was born and raised in Akron, went to school there and played basketball. And at the age of 18, got drafted on the Ca- uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. He didn't even play ball in college. He skipped it entirely. Right. And also for wow. context, weren't you raised near Akron? Like Akron isn't that far away from your hometown, right? Uh, about an hour west of Cleveland. OK. So, I mean, but like an hour and a half from Akron, probably. Mm. But not, not like terribly, terribly far. Actually, I played LeBron's high school in football. Akron St. Vincent St. Mary. Yeah. Right. Played, so him for the, played him for the state championship. Right. So he grew up like kind of a stone's throw away from you. Like in yeah, the grand yeah, scheme yeah. of things. Relatively close. Yeah. Was there a follow up question? Yeah. So how does it make you feel? How does it make you feel oh, seeing I, an Ohioan be the star I mean, of Space Jam? There, too? There's some level of, of, of pride there. Like, you know, like knowing that he's born and raised and he's, he's like a proud Ohioan too. Um, and he does a lot for like the communities around there and, th- and stuff like that. Um, it donates to a lot of local charities, but like, yeah, I mean, but in terms of my attachment to like his basketball career, it's not like all really that much. I was never really a big sporto, but I mean, I, re- mm. I respect LeBron James and I, I think, I don't know. He does a lot of good shit for a lot of people. Yeah, I, th- I think it says a lot that for me, I'm not a big sports person in general. I struggle to, to reference the right sport often, but I respect LeBron James a lot for who he is. Cause like in the, you know, in the same way that I respect Michael Jordan a lot, right? Like, I don't mm. functionally understand how or why he's so good at basketball. I just know he is. But more mm. importantly, I understand that so many people in the last 20 years have picked up basketball because they want to be the next Michael Jordan. Like, that's how inspiring Michael Jordan was, right? Yeah. And in the same way, I think LeBron James is that today, where I understand, like, I, I don't functionally understand how or why LeBron's so good at basketball because I don't watch enough basketball, but I understand there are so many kids or adults even who are my age right now who like are playing basketball or trying to play basketball professionally because of LeBron James, right? Like I understand the importance of that. So the, the legacy, if you will, the legacy of LeBron James. So I think it says a lot that I understand the legacy of LeBron James as someone who is not a big sports person. And this movie has made me lose respect for lebron james i think that's kind of my takeaway from from this movie and this movie yeah. made you lose respect lose a little bit well i don't know if it, it i would go as far as to say that it made me lose respect for him um i mean yeah there, there's some level of ego that comes with doing a movie that's you, you know you're kind of the centerpiece right and you know it's all about because you're just an all-star athlete whatever but you know i mean it's just a part of like making it as a big star athlete. I mean, we really don't get too many of like big star athletes like that to that level anymore. Um, like a like a LeBron James, you yeah. know. There, there's, there's. I mean, you just don't see athletes in movies much anymore. I mean, it happens mm. every once in a while. I, I think the only there's like a couple of I think Randy Couture, the UFC fighter, was in like one of the Expendables movies, but that's the last one I can think of. Unless I'm missing one. Like. I don't have a problem with uh, him being hyped up as a athlete in a film yeah, or even like hyped up beyond what uh, his, you know, uh, legendary career might deserve. But it's more like it was the emphasis on like, wow, like Mm -hmm. you're a legend uh, and you're really popular on social media and you have a lot of influence <laughs> they did put a lot the, of emphasis that, on that didn't they that like braggadocious part like it was like okay now fuck you i i, I can't have any like fun feelings after that yeah. whereas with the original it was more like he's a he's a star yeah yeah we know okay the difference for me lies in like it it goes back to what we were talking about with the difference between the two movies, right? Because I'm fairly sure, again, I am super not as tapped into 90 sports as I am into 2010 sports. And even then, it's not much. But I know that around that time, MJ was doing his baseball career and it wasn't going quite as well as his basketball career. So I imagine the Space Jam movie was definitely an ego boost for him, right? It was definitely like a... Hey, he might suck right now, but remember when he was really good in the Bulls? Remember when he did the Bulls mm. really good? Um, so it's still definitely an ego boost for MJ, right? The difference is I think MJ took the paycheck from Warner Bros. to boost his ego because he saw the script and was like, 
cool. It's a fun mo- basketball movie with the Looney Tunes. That'll be fun. LeBron James took the probably seven, if not eight figure check from uh, Warner Bros. And he saw the script and was like, cool, I get to sell Harry Potter merch and Game of Thrones merch <laughs> in two hours. I'm in, baby. Let's fucking go. And that's kind of why I'm like, eh, OK, that kind of sucks. OK, so as your point is like you wish he would have like. Had more say in what the hell the movie was or like that he did the movie no. at all. No, I that he did the movie at all, okay. because it's, it's definitely to me, it's like, OK, the script was very clearly about let's shove in as much merch as we can into this. And he mm. was like, cool, I'm in. I'm on board. Whereas, again, in the first movie, like you had to kind of look for the merch. I think, Colin, you called out like a cereal box or two that was like super in the background. It felt very like, yeah, just mm. part of the never, environment. Never very in your face. It was just kind of like there. Yeah, and and he had his own brand throughout the film as well. Oh, the Air Jordans. Well, yeah, yeah. Like there's or no in uh the the, the new one with LeBron, LeBron James is uh it's like a L and a J and it looks like a crown. Oh yeah, that's right, right. Yeah, that's his that's his Nike offshoot brand. Kind of, the same thing as Air Jordan. Yeah, much. well, yeah, because I mean, in the first movie too, there were characters that commented on MJ shoes. Were like, "Whoa, cool shoes!" It was very clearly like, "And you at home too can buy these Air Jordans yourself, right?" For uh-huh. the low, low price of one hundred and fifty dollars. Right. So it's not like the first movie is devoid of consumerism or capitalism, right? It's just it's so pulled back that it can still feel like a Looney Tunes movie that's about basketball, whereas the second movie is just fucking like. Look at all the shit WB owns, baby. Wow. Yeah, I, if I there's think planets. The, the, the unfortunate thing is, is I think each of these movies are very much a product of their time. Right. Yes. It's like I was thinking to myself when I was watching the second movie, I was like, you know, it's kind of exactly what I pictured they would do with the Space Jam movie, making it in the year 2021 in a lot of ways. Based on the things that we've got in the past, like emoji movie and oh my God. yeah, and like Ready Player One stuff that's just like trying real hard to be hip with the kids and trying hard. Yeah. And that, all that sort of thing. And it's just it doesn't really work as as well. But like also, but I mean, when like this new space Jam movie comes out at a time when social media is a more prolific thing. And like, you know, a follower count gets brought up the Internet, like the Internet and cell phones ruins a lot of plot lines and a lot of movies that get written, you know, because and that's why that's actually why we get a lot of movies nowadays that are set in like the, the, the 80s mm. and earlier, because a lot in a lot of movies, it's like, oh, if I had my smartphone, the situation Just Google happen. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like um, half of the episodes of Friends would be pointless with a smartphone. Right. Uh. Whereas, like, in, in, like, the 90s, you know, I mean, not only did they, they make the, the Looney Tunes more prolific, they had the style of comedy that they did, but um, they didn't have things like social media. The internet wasn't a big thing yet. It was in its infancy. Michael Jordan, like, the thing with, with celebrities back then is, like, being a celebrity was a much more private, closed-off thing, too, right? Like, they, mm. they didn't have social media and shit to post on all the mm. time. They didn't have YouTube to post videos on or any of that. Talk about, like, what the hell they were doing. Nothing outside of, like press conferences and interviews and the way that they present that celebrities presented themselves was very like clean and uh just i don't know really brushed up like just a very outward version of themselves mm. the cells right so like it, it wasn't you know you, you don't really know if it was like an ego thing on michael's part unless he talks about it in like the fucking the last dance the documentary series on netflix now but right. you know cool. I, I think it goes even a step beyond that. I think it's, um, it, you know, we live in a society, right? As yes. the famous Space Whoa. Jam character <laughs> Joker would say, we, we live there. in a society. He starred. Right? But so when I think back to, again, I was alive in the 90s, but I was also like five. So take this with a grain of salt, but like, whatever. The 90s was very anti-consumer. Like what was popular back in the day? It was like Green Day and Grunge, which are two of the mm. most like anti-consumer. Well, not Green Day. But Anti-capitalist, punk, like stripped punk down. Yeah. Like fuck like, the establishment sort of thing. 
Yeah, like punk rock and grunge were huge, right? And those were just like, man, fuck the man, right? I hate the man, even though they worked with the man to get millions of records sold, right? But uh, but it was the we'll image. Skim over that. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was what was popular, right? Which is why I think that joke of, you know, hey, why don't we see the money from all the lunchboxes that are sold with our faces on it? That's why I think yeah. that joke was written at that time, because yeah. it flew so well in that anti-capitalist society, right? Whereas now in 2021, one it's i wouldn't say it's pro capitalist because i know there are a lot of liberals out there like probably us included that are maybe being slightly more disillusioned with capitalism day by day that's right dab daily just like lebron james did um <laughs> <laughs> dabbing for capitalism dabbing against <laughs> capitalism right oh, there you go. but but in in terms of you know media and the stuff we consume everything feels so connected right i think it's funny but also interesting that we can all very easily name movies that are so like you know ready player one like look at all the yeah. shit that's in one movie yo um so it's it's all kind of like connected now unfortunately right and i think that's why space jam in 2021 like colin was saying earlier right like there's no way they could have made a space jam differently in the year of our Lord 2021, because this is what it would look like, right? This um, is what it is now. Yeah, America is too pro, like, conglomerate, consumerist, capitalist, where it makes, like, these these lines, this plot, this entire movie was focus grouped to be this way. In the same way yeah. that the 90s Space Jam was focus grouped to be very anti-capitalist and not have that much product placement in it. Wait, wait, it was focus group, do you think? Oh, I'm, uh, every Hollywood movie is focus group, Colin. My point is yeah. that in the 90s, when they focus grouped it, what was reflected to them was that America at that time wouldn't have been cool about Michael Jordan being like, cool, let me call my friends on my Apple iPhone, where I could use this Apple iPhone to call my friends. Apple is good, right? Whereas... Mm. Today, LeBron James can be like, yep, I'm wearing my LeBron James clothes and I fell into a Nike crater by Nike, you fucks. Yeah, I mean, the closest thing you had in the 90s was the scene from uh, Wayne's World. They're like, we we don't give in to corporate sponsors. And and Garth was like, nope, we sure don't. And he's like wearing all the Adidas gear. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, yeah. And like, that's very like it's, it's presented in a way where it's funny because, you know, they expect the people to be anti-capitalist. Right. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I, it's just, I don't know, man. That's, that's, I really hope we see less of a trend of us getting this whole like member berries sort of commercial of a movie. It just doesn't, yeah. there's no, I mean, it's just not, it's, there's no substance to it. There's no substance mm. at it's all. It's just self congratulatory and like sad almost like what is that what we have is that what you have to offer is just we have a lot of stuff yeah we have a lot of stuff versus making like an actual movie that can then become one of the things that we have that's successful we're just gonna sacrifice this in order to be a commercial for everything else yeah i mean it's like who is this movie made for people that i guess want to feel nostalgic and then a bunch of boardroom execs that can look at this as Warner Brothers portfolio, I guess. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> send me your portfolio. Okay. I'll send you a copy of Space Jam, a new legacy. Like, I wouldn't be as mad at all the product placement if it was actually like factored into the story and the plot, right? Because, like, let's, I, I think we've gone far too long without saying this, unfortunately, but consider. Looney Tunes product placement, right? Like <laughs> the, the entire conceit of the movie is what if Looney Tunes in real life, right? Um, yeah. So it's just from the get go, the conceit is very consumerist, right? But when the second movie is like, we're going to point at Harry Potter and then we're going to point at Game of Thrones and then we're going to point at all of these things that actually really do anything meaningful with it like like it would be so different if austin powers was one of the fucking basketball players and mad max was another one of the basketball players right and then fucking they yeah. bring in daniel ratcliffe to be like the point guard right or something like that. like if they actually truly um brought these references in made them a part of the script i think it would have yeah. been received a the lot better the Warner Brothers Cinematic Universe. The WBCU. The the you want to talk about the most ambitious crossover ever? 
Mm-hmm. It could have been Space Jam. <laughs> yeah, but instead of, you know, actually having these crossovers matter or be meaningful, it's just a billboard. Window dressing. Yeah. And with that, I'm going to begin to wrap us up. But before I do, I do want to ask you guys if you could change or add one thing, just one, only one, to the new Space Jam, what would it be? Just like anything? Anything. I mean, because they fuck, they put the kitchen sink in there. Might as well. Yeah, I would open take the floor. out LeBron James. Everything is the same except that character is just gone. There's no principal character. What I would have done, I would have rewritten the the Michael B. Jordan scene, right? But I would have rewritten uh, it in a way where when Michael B. Jordan is leaving the room, his friend outside, Michael Jordan, is like, "Come on, man, let's get out of here." Right, so it would have been hops in the car. Yeah, Yeah, he would. It would have been the real Michael Jordan there, but like the Looney Tunes completely missed him, which would have been super on point for them. That would have been good. Yeah, yeah. I, I would. Uh, I would have liked something like Bill Murray shows up again, and he like walks into the Coliseum. He's like, "Damn it, how did I end up here again?" Or something like that. (laughs) Or he calls the producers and like, "I didn't ask for this." (laughs) I guys. Guys, again. <laughs> but yeah. Gosh. I think that would be the one thing I do. We could have had it all. I don't know. The Dan Aykroyd thing would have been pretty funny, though. Oh, that yeah. would have been pretty yeah, great. That would have been, been so good. good. Even though right. the joke wouldn't have landed on me because, like, I didn't even remember the joke from the first Space Jam until I saw yeah, it. Yeah, right? no. No. It's, it's, it's one of those ones that it comes back to you and you're like, oh, mm-hmm. so <laughs> I love it. Dear listener, if you've taken anything away from this, this, uh, oh my gosh, our, our almost hour and a half long show about maybe, uh, go watch the original Space Jam. If you decide to watch a Space Jam movie, just go watch it. If you've already seen it, go watch that one again and remember how, how pretty darn, darn charming it was. Don't bother with the second one unless you like being advertised to. Right. Is this a good time to bring up that today's episode is sponsored by Nike Warner Bros. DC. AT&T. The official carrier of the Everything and Podcast. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Uh, I was was trying to see if AT&T doesn't have their own podcast host. I was trying to think of like, yeah, no, Apple does. What else can we shill? Yeah, let's shill everything. If if someone would like to sponsor us, then we could shill. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, we 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 would we would like to take on Hello Fresh Blue Apron. Uh, 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 what what the what, what's the oh, one with the you, fucked you up are, looking? You are giving them free advert. They don't even need to pay us anymore. I know. <laughs> what, yeah, stop it. Come on, stop what it. are we you space be paid jam? by the syllable, dude? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to fucking go to the the place with the code and the twenty percent off and the yeah. This has been you're, everything. You're so ready. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I'm just waiting for the day. Rage Shadow Legends. Where you at? Let's go. Mm-hmm. what if raid shadow legends was in the new space jam listen i'll tell you right now if we get raid shadow legends i'm doing the longest pos like the longest ever raid shadow legends ad segment i'm, I'm sorry i would veto raid shadow legends. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> i would do like a 20 minute long raid shadow legends advert <laughs> um okay this has been everything in pod thank you so much for listening you can find us at everything in pod on Twitter, everything in pod at gmail.com. If you want to email us with your questions, thoughts, comments, concerns, we definitely want to hear what your uh, anti capitalist thoughts are on the new Space Jam movie. What you think of LeBron James being in this movie? Uh, whether we can actually, can we actually even have a movie anymore if LeBron James isn't in this movie? I don't know. You tell us. Uh, you you know, th- le- leave it to our show. To make Space Jam 2 political. <laughs> I is. came out the gate and was like, Everything let's is. capitalism. Let's fucking go. Let's go. Video We're game's j- bad. <laughs> and somebody, somebody's going to want, I can see the comments now on YouTube, just like, you fucking anti-capitalist cucks, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we're, we're socialists for yeah, we're sure. Socialists, fascists, communists, all the buzzwords. Yeah, daily hand me my sickle, comrade. Yes. Mr. Gray and, and my Gray. hammer. Um, the fascist cat. There was no Lord of the Rings reference in this movie. Gandalf. 
Which, the, yes, I don't remember. Wait, I where? don't think it where? made it to the final no, cut. No, that was did. in the trailer. That it wasn't did. in the actual He's movie. like, we need a wizard no, like did. Gandalf. Yeah. Because, I don't remember okay, Gandalf so being on that board. Bugs Shatner was searching for the tunes. And then LeBron James off the side being like, hey, I found a whiteboard. Let me write a bunch of Warner Brothers movies on it. And one of the ones he wrote on it was Gandalf. The, you know the movie Gandalf? The um, movie Gandalf. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he was like, Gandalf Le of the Rings. Yeah, no, Le LeBron James was trying to like build his dream team and he named like Superman, of course. Uh, Gandalf would be pretty good and they wrote down Gandalf's name. Yeah, this is probably oh the one time the Tolkien estate has come in clutch because they probably would have vetoed the fuck out of that. Could you imagine fucking, um, uh, oh my God, what's his name? Bilbo? No, Frodo. The one who plays Frodo? Elijah Wood. Elijah yeah. Wood being in the movie as Frodo? Could you imagine? Bruh. Yeah, like I said, that... <laughs> The Tolkien estate would have been like the Tolkien estate barely let the Lord of the Rings movies happen. All right. Mm -hmm. They're not going to let their IP be bastardized in a corporate show movie like this. I'm surprised even that they that Gandalf was even written in this movie. Allowed to be yeah. written out. Yes. Of the wizards that they have. I'm surprised that, yeah, Gandalf made the appearance that he somewhat did yeah, yeah so, so so in the in the youtube comments below let us know what was your favorite wb cameo from <laughs> from space jam 2 oh there was a back to the future reference in there too i forgot about that oh what was it back to the basket member right back member. to the basket <gasps> yeah yeah. Like that. yeah yeah member member all right y'all that's gonna do it for us this week on everything in potteration member. i'm off to yeet this movie into the fires of mount doom goodbye into Moron Mountain, baby. Let's go, fucking moron.